Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brothers and sisters in Islam. This is our third lecture of our series of lectures talking about the ideological invasion, the intellectual attack against the Muslims and some of the techniques and tactics that the Islamophobes and the enemies of Islam use to try to cause confusion amongst the ranks of the Muslims. In our previous two lectures, we talked briefly about some of the individuals and some of the Islamic sects and some of the Islamic uh, groups which have appeared within the ranks of the Muslims who are actually taking part and participating in uh, putting forth some of the techniques and the tactics that the enemies of Islam are trying to confuse the Muslims uh, in, in regards to. So, as we all know, the shaitan and iblis and his agents from amongst the jinn and humankind use many different tactics to deceive, mislead, and avert people from the truth. And this is from the beginning of time, since the creation of Adam and the creation of Hawa, when Iblis came to Adam السلام, and tricked him and tempted him to eat from the forbidden tree, promising Adam that he would gain extensive knowledge and see the truth. And indeed, all throughout time, all throughout history, even our day and time, Iblis, Shaitan, and his agents try to constantly tempt, deceive, and avert people from the truth and submitting to Allah by tempting them with things that are physically appealing to them. Either things that appeal to one's desires, things that appeal to one's intellect, things that appeal to one's emotions or feelings. So Shaitan and his agents from amongst the jinn and mankind, they try to distract the people upon goodness distract and deceive the people upon righteousness. They want to distract them and divert them from seeing the truth and from seeing the falsehood as falsehood and seeing the truth as the truth. So what the shaitan does and his agents do, they influence people so much to the, to the, to the extent where individuals will start seeing falsehood as truth and start seeing the truth as falsehood. So what they do is shayateen, the enemies of Islam, they try to deceive people to think that the righteous are despicable extremists and the criminals, the transgressors, the oppressors are the righteous. A few years back there was a research done and it was compiled in a booklet called Civil Democratic Islam. And within this book, we find the techniques that the enemies of Islam, the Islamophobes, those behind the hatred machine, those promoting bigotry and discrimination and Islamic hatred, and those at the head of the ideological attack against the Muslims use, okay, they use these techniques within this manual and other techniques as well to divide and conquer the Muslims intellectually, spiritually, and physically. So they use these techniques to divide and conquer the Muslims' minds, the Muslims' hearts, the Muslims' bodies, and eventually the Muslim lands, both physically and ideologically. So in this manual entitled Civil Democratic Islam, we can find the type of Islam that the modernists, the progressives, the liberals, and the enemies of Islam want to force upon the Muslims who are holding fast onto the Quran and Sunnah and coerce them to try to follow or try to force those upon the Quran and the Sunnah to follow. And their biggest soldiers, their biggest agents from amongst mankind are the Islamophobes and their mass media outlets and news channels and social media uh, websites, not to mention their armies and their army bases based all throughout the world. So in this book entitled Civil Democratic Islam, this is, we're going to talk briefly about some of the things that this book actually mentions. One of the things that it says, quote unquote, it says, 
the Islamic world is involved in a struggle to determine its own nature and values, which is entirely false and completely absurd, as the values and nature of Islam and the Muslims have been determined 1,439 years ago. Rather, it is the West and the non-Muslim nations that are constantly debating and differing about their values and nature. So what this book said, it said the Islamic world is involved in a struggle to determine its own nature and values. And we know this is completely false and completely absurd because the values and the principles and the teachings of Islam have been determined 1,440 years ago. Okay, But rather it is the West and the non-Muslim nations that are constantly debating and differing in regards to their morals, their laws, their values, their ethics. So some of the things that are mentioned in this book which are actually techniques to try to destroy the true Islam and weaken the true Muslims are, I'm going to mention one thing here and then I'm going to expound on it briefly. Number one, one of their techniques that they say, support the modernists first and give them a public platform. Make their opinions and judgments on fundamental questions of religious interpretation available to a mass audience in competition with those of the fundamentalists and traditionalists who have websites, publishing houses, schools, institutes, and many other vehicles for disseminating their views. Okay, So what they try to do, they try to give the uneducated, the uneducated, the, un, the, the, the Muslims who are Islamically uneducated, okay, who have may, been, may have been educated uh, in Western institutions who learned about Islam, but they didn't learn the fundamentals and the foundations of Islam. Many of them cannot speak Arabic. Many of them do not know how to reconcile between different texts and how to understand them properly. So many times you find that the media, okay, whether it be the news, whether it be the local TV stations or the newspapers, in the majority of the cases, they will give these modernists and progressives and liberals a public platform as they are the representatives of the Muslim Ummah. Another thing that this manual mentions, it says another tactic or technique that they use is position secularism and modernism as a counterculture option for disaffected Islamic youth. Another tactic that they use, that they mention, assist in the development of independent civic organizations to promote civic culture and provide a space for ordinary citizens to educate themselves about the political process and to articulate their views. Another tactic, support the modernists and publish and distribute their books and works at subsidized cost. Another tactic, Encourage them to write for mass audiences and for the youth. And this is why, brothers and sisters, the mass media, the majority of the time, only allows Muslims who have been through the their, okay, the liberals and the progressive and the modernist training classes to speak on issues related to Islam and the Muslims, and not true Islamic scholars who studied the religion for years upon years upon years. So what do they do? They target the Muslim youth because they know that with the conquering of the minds of the Muslim youth that they've destroyed or they have, they are on the path to try and destroy the future for Islam and the Muslims. They know that it is our Muslim youth who will stand up for the truth. Ibrahim, our great prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was young and he saw that his father was sculpting idols and he used to sell idols and make a living off of selling these sculptures, okay? Ibrahim, he was young. He was a youth at that age, and he destroyed the idols of his father. Also, the boys in the cave, they were in their youth. And some of the best of the earlier followers, the companions of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa were in their prime, in their youth. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Umar, and the youth were the ones who carried on the prophetic legacy. And our youth today, brothers and sisters, will carry on to future generations whatever Islam we are teaching them today. Also, what this booklet mentions, it says, introduce, from their tactics, it says, introduce 
the liberal, modernist, progressive views into the curriculum of Islamic education. And as I say, this has been done not only here in the West, but also internationally, where uh, non-Muslim nations establishing and determining the curriculums for Muslim majority countries and nations. And they have already done so in many Muslim countries, not to mention Muslim schools here in the West. The introduction of gender identity, uh, homosexuality, uh, women being imams, okay, the interfaith movement, okay, erasing lessons about uh, jihad, which means to struggle and exert one's efforts for the sake of Allah against evil, injustice, transgression, and oppression. And jihad is of many types. Okay, you have the spiritual jihad, which is struggling against one's own desires and temptations of the shaitan, which is our biggest enemy. Also, jihad with the tongue, by speaking out against oppression and transgression and falsehood. Also, jihad with the pen, by writing articles and books, rebutting people of falsehood, and also jihad with weapons, if the situation calls for that. And also, okay, what they've also, uh, lessons about Allah's prescribed punishments in the Quran or in the Holy Scriptures or Allah's legislation. So you find that from the techniques and tactics of these who are putting forth the ideological warfare and intellectual uh, attack against Muslims and the Muslim people and the Muslim nations is that they try to get involved in writing the curriculums of these Islamic schools and these uh, educational institutes. Also, another technique and tactic that they mention is to facilitate and encourage an awareness of the Arabs or the non-Arabs pre- and non-Islamic history. That's why you find in school they focus so much on Pharaonic Egypt or the Roman Empire or the Persian Empire. But very rarely do you have them focus on the history of Islamic Spain. Okay, or the Islamic history and what happened in Jerusalem, what led up to the Christian conquests. Okay, so expounding upon their great civilizations, their great beliefs that they say, their practices, people in history, instead of talking about the great Islamic civilization in history. Okay, and they tried to focus on reviving the local culture, okay, such as Arab nationalism or American nationalism whether it's white American nationalism or black American nationalism, Egyptian nationalism, Persian nationalism, and, and, that, and that Muslims and th those who follow Islam should not have any pride at all in their Islamic history, that they should take pride in their nation, that they should take pride in their race, that they should take pride in their ethnicity. Okay? Also, another one of their techniques is to encourage the popularity and acceptance of Sufism, okay? Which basically, if you look at the different sects in Islam that have emerged, okay? Sufism in general is a passive, non-confrontational version of Islam, okay? Where they have um, added many things onto the religion, innovated new things into the religion, and they've adopted many beliefs and practices which were influenced by the practices of Christians Buddhists and Hindus okay and this is well known for anybody who studies these uh, different sects of Sufism which have emerged also another one of their tactics that they use is to discriminate between different sectors or different groups of traditionalism okay they encourage those with a greater affinity to I guess you can say Qiyas or modernism okay such as what is uh, ascribed to the Hanafi Madhab Okay, or the Hanafi school uh, of jurisprudence versus the other jurisprudence schools of thought. Okay, so they encourage these modernists, these progressives, and these liberal Muslims to issue religious opinions and popularize them to weaken the authority of what the liberals and the progressives and the modernists and the enemies of Islam claim is backward Wahhabi inspired religious rulings. Okay, so some of the other tactics that the Islamophobes use. Okay, and those trying to attack the Muslims intellectually and ideologically is they publicize the consequences of those traditionalists or fundamentalist Muslims, some of the mistakes or violent acts which they have may have fallen into. Okay, while ignoring 
the violent acts of the modernists, the liberals, progressives, some who may ascribe to the Shia ideology or the Sufi methodology. Another tactic that they use is they try to encourage divisions amongst the fundamentalists, okay? And what they mean by fundamentalists are those who basically are following and trying to hold onto the Quran and the Sunnah. So what do they do? They encourage people who follow different jurisprudence schools of thought. This one is Hanafi, this one's Maliki, this one's Shafi, this one's uh, Hanafi or Hanbali. They encourage these people because of their differences in opinion and jurisprudence schools of thought, they encourage them to bicker and fight and argue about jurisprudence issues that are far away from being fundamental concerns in the religion, okay? Another tactic that they use, okay, is to confront and oppose the fundamentalists, okay, in their propaganda war, okay? They always portray, or many of the times they only portray those Muslims who grow their beards and wear thobes as extremists or fundamentalists. They portray Muslim women who wear niqab or hijab or abaya as oppressed by their husbands. They portray Muslim women, okay, who dress modestly and do not shake hands with men as fundamentalists. They portray Muslims who reject and do not believe that the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims worship the same Lord as fundamentalists, extremists, or terrorists. But they don't talk about the conservative Christian women who dress modestly, who may cover their heads, okay, the Amish women and some of the Mennonite women, or the Jewish women who dress modestly, or the Jewish men who grow their beards. They don't describe them ever as extremists or fundamentalists, okay? Another one of their tactics is that they selectively support secularists, okay? Either they support nationalism or the leftist movements, okay? And they would prefer to support a certain ethnic group and unite them based upon their nationality and ethnicity rather than upon the Islamic creed and following the religion. So many times you'll find that the funding behind many of these nationalist and ethnic groups within the Muslim ranks, whether it's a Pakistani uh, organization which only caters to the issues of Pakistani people, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, or a Bangladeshi organization or an African-American organization or a Caucasian-American organization which only cater to those certain individuals from that ethnicity, okay? Many times you find that there are funds coming in from these Islamophobes and from the progressive, the modernist, and the liberal Muslims because they want to forward their agenda. So they never encourage the people to unite upon Tawheed or upon the Sunnah. Rather, they encourage the people to, to unite upon nationality, upon race, or ethnicity. So there's just so many different tactics, okay, that are mentioned in this book called Civil Democratic Islam, in which you will find that there are indirect techniques which they use and also direct techniques which they use as well. And these are just some of the tactics and techniques used to brainwash not only the Muslims, but also the innocent American people, our neighbors, and to shape their thoughts into hating and disliking Islam and the Muslims. So many of these biased media organizations and news uh, corporations, movie production companies and news stations that are funded by these this network of over 37 organizations, by these Islamophobes, many times they only portray Muslims in movies as terrorists, as suicide bombers, as kidnappers, or criminals, okay? So the Islamophobes working with many privately owned media corporations, such as the David Horowitz Freedom Center, the Christian Broadcast Network, Rush Limbaugh, Fox News Channel, Pamela Geller, Atlas Shrugs, Washington Times, the National Review, Clarion Fund, Sean Hannity, and others, okay? They've indoctrinated many non-Muslims to think and believe that true Muslims, that those who are holding firm unto the Quran and the Sunnah are fundamentalists, terrorists, extremists, suicide bombers, uncivilized, and barbaric. And the mass media corporations constantly tried to instill a sense of fear within the hearts of non-Muslims towards Muslims, which has led to much violence, 
hatred and bigotry directed toward practicing Muslims in the West. So these were just some of the tactics and techniques that the Islamophobes and the progressive Muslims and the liberal Muslims and the modernist Muslims are using all together to try to change okay, the way of thinking of Muslims who want to hold on to the Quran and hold on to the Sunnah and hold on to their pure and unadulterated religious teachings contained in the Quran and contained in the Sunnah. So in our next lecture, we will talk briefly about some of the history, okay? Some of the history that when we talk about the history, hopefully it will clear up some doubts and misconceptions, okay? That the biased media has been spreading about Islam and the Muslims. So we will talk about some things which occurred in history to put things into their proper perspectives. Jazakallah uh, khair wa barakatuh for listening. May Allah bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.